Is this the Dark Souls of first grade math homework? Well, you tell me, but I think you'll find if you try to do it, it really makes you feel like a first grader. And that's because even though at a glance, this might look like one of those math problems where teachers have totally overcomplicated something to give kids some bizarre worksheet, this is actually a pretty darn good worksheet. It's pretty funny at a glance because its structure does look pretty intimidating. You know, there's a lot going on here. Compare this to legitimate university level math homework, which at times, you know, early in an abstract algebra class could be something like prove that zero times one equals zero. Meanwhile, the first graders have this gargantuan maze of numerical <laughs> representations. Now, the person who posted this homework on Reddit uh, added the caption, what the heck is this, but with additional vulgarities. So they were not sure what's being asked for here. The instructions are pretty minimal. It just says in each empty box, write the matching value between adjacent cards. I suppose they could have been more clear with the instructions, but I think what you're supposed to to do is pretty clear here. Each box has four numbers represented four different ways, just normally, represented as basic arithmetic, represented in words, and represented with base 10 blocks. And of course, every two adjacent boxes have an empty space between them where you're supposed to write the number that the two boxes have in common, regardless of representation. Hopefully the instructions are clear, so here's one more zoomed out look if you wanted to go through and figure each of these out yourself. Let's quickly fill out the worksheet and then I'll show you some of the first grade educational standards that this is aligned with. And then we'll talk a little bit about graph theory and set theory. So starting in the top left, these two boxes, what number do they have in common? 13, 17, 16, 11, no, nope. uh, 24, there we are, 24 and 24. So in this box connecting them, we will put the number 24. These two boxes have a number in common. What number? 24. Moving to the right, what number do these two boxes have in common? This one has a 19, and this one you can see also has a 19. It has one a stick of 10, and then nine individual blocks here, so that's 19. So 19 is the number shared by those two blocks. Moving down a row and looking at what number these two boxes have in common, nothing jumps out at me immediately. Let's see, 16, 11, 28, and 14. Hmm, maybe it's 17 that's a match? Let me grab my calculator and check. All right, turn this bad boy on. We'll check, I think 17 is the match. Let's just check 10 plus seven. So 10 plus seven, and that is, okay, 17. So that is the number shared between those two boxes. Moving on to these two boxes, we see 13 and 13 there with the base 10 blocks. So that's the number shared here. Moving on to this next one, let's see, what do we have? 14, 12, that looks like 29. 15, 16, uh, it could be, maybe it's 14 here that's a match. Uh, let me just grab my calculator, we'll check 10 plus four. All right, let me go ahead and turn this thing on and let's open her up and run the numbers. So I'm looking to check 10 plus four here. So let's see, 10 and then plus and four. And okay, yeah, so that is 14. This is some pretty tough stuff. So a 14 here and let's speed through the rest of this. And there it is fully filled out. Yeah, like I said, it really is a pretty good first grade math worksheet. It's helping you practice exactly what first graders need to practice, which is their comfort with the different representations of numbers, as well as a little bit of basic arithmetic. In the United States, many of our states follow what are called the common core standards. Here are some of the common core math standards for first graders. These points talk a bit about addition and subtraction with objects and drawings, which you can see a bit in this worksheet. Of course, that's part of what we're doing with the base 10 blocks. Here's a big overview of the grade one standards. And in that worksheet, we're practicing addition. We're practicing an understanding of whole number relationships and place value with those base 10 blocks, uh, including grouping in tens and ones. The base 10 blocks also convey some form of linear measurement when you see those uh, unit blocks stacked on top of each other. 
here. There's understanding place value, which again goes back to the base 10 blocks. This talks about recognizing the numbers 11 to 19 as composed of a 10 and some ones. So driving home points about the place value, again, base 10 blocks. And this talks about addition with small numbers and using a variety of models, which is what this worksheet is all about. It's definitely a lot to look at at first glance. I imagine plenty of students would be a bit overwhelmed at first glance looking at this worksheet. Uh, but yeah, for sure, it's a, it's a good worksheet aligned with first grade math standards. Mathematically, what we're really looking at this worksheet is a graph with the vertices that are sets that are joined together if they have an element in common. So quick little intro to that stuff for anyone who's not up to speed. A graph is an object in mathematics which consists of vertices and edges joining pairs of vertices. Here's an example of a graph, four vertices, and in this case, four edges which join pairs of vertices. The vertices can represent anything, and the edges often represent some sort of relationship between the vertices. For example, this graph could be a social network, so each vertex is a person, maybe this vertex is Amralitha, this vertex could be Borrower, this one could represent Symbir, and this one is Dolgil. And then there could be an edge between any two people that are friends. So Barrior and Symbir are friends. Barrior and Dolgil are also friends. However, Dolgil is not friends with Amralitha because there's no edge joining them. This is an example of what's called a simple graph, but there are also things called directed graphs where the edges have direction to indicate some direction in the relationship that's being described. For example, here's a graph with three vertices. Maybe these three vertices represent the numbers one, two, and three. And the relationship I'm considering is less than. One is less than two, but I don't want to represent that just with a plain old edge because two isn't less than one. The relationship only goes in a single direction. One is less than two, so I could draw an arrow on the edge like that to give it the proper direction. Similarly, two is less than three. So in the first grade math worksheet, we have vertices, but the vertices are these sets of number representations, and the edges, in this case, don't have direction. So it would be more like this graph, less like this graph. Because in this worksheet, the relationship that this graph is showing is has a number in common. If I were drawing this out a bit more formally, this first box, for example, we could represent as a set, which is an unordered collection of distinct objects. This set contains 17. It contains the number 11, although it's being expressed this way. It contains the number 24, but expressed in words. And it contains the number 14, but expressed with base 10 blocks. And that's everything that's in that first set. This is what's represented by one vertex in this graph. Another vertex represents this box here. And these two vertices should be joined by an edge because they're related under the relation has a number in common with. This set has a number in common with this set and vice versa. They both have that number 17, so they could be joined by an edge. More generally, we could say that they are joined by an edge because their intersection, the intersection of these two sets, is non-empty. That means if we look at only the elements they have in common, well, there is some stuff there. In this case, there's exactly one thing, which is the number 17, but the point is it's not empty. Their intersection isn't empty, so they are joined by an edge. On the other hand, another vertex in the graph represents this box here. Now, on the worksheet, we are not asked to find a number that this box has in common with those first two that I wrote out. They're on, you know, totally different sides of the grid. But if we're representing this as a graph where two vertices are joined, if they have a non-empty intersection, well then this vertex does need to be joined to this one because they have 16 in common. And in fact, it must also be joined to this one because they have 14 in common. So even though these relationships were not shown by the worksheet, uh, they do exist. And if we were drawing this as a graph like this, then these edges would exist. So although the worksheet looks a little bit messy at first glance, it could have looked a lot worse. I mean, imagine if the whole thing was written out like this and there were edges going all over the place and students were asked to label the edge with the number that the vertices or sets have in common. Oh, that would be a disaster. Oh.
I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep the cable cut and unsort the table If Texas Instruments don't reply, well, I think this time it might be fatal I Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet faded Psychosomatic habits, why you're so, so